Welcome back to What Would Hexes Do? Today we will discuss the territory defense event and the presets that I use for defending against the different monsters. First of all, the gear that I use for this event is same as that of Undead King since we are dealing with monsters here. You can also put on the 15% attack and HP buffs if you like. So okay, without any more delays, let's take a look at the event itself and then eventually the presets that I use. So we have already finished our event here. And first of all, why is it important and why is it really useful to do this event? As you can see, just by scoring 200,000 points, as in individual points, you can easily get 2,200 gems from this event since they reduced the number of waves and everything. Now there are only 12 waves in total and 50 minutes is what I take usually to do this event. So 2,200 gems for that time is a big big deal for us free to play players and along with that some material chests are also there which are quite useful for your emblem upgrades or your new um, gear forging in blacksmith there are also other ranking rewards here for different points that you can get quite easy to get these gems and so i would highly recommend everyone to try your best to then attend this event not only for your alliance but also for your individual rewards as well and then, of course, there are alliance ranking rewards depending on how active your alliance is and how strong your members are. You can always aim for the rank 1, which is, again, another 720 gems, along with really useful crystal coins, Lord XP points, and also some lucky coins are there. So that's the rank 1. So that's, again, adding to your gem gain uh, from just one event. So that's already close to 3,000 uh, gems. And then also... If you're a high scoring player in this event, you can also get individual ranking rewards. If you have, if you score high enough and you're, if you're rank one, then you get 4,800 gems. And there are also much useful healing speeds and recruitment speeds, building speeds. So these are all coming to you with such an easy event where you don't need to spend money, just uh, an active alliance and be able to participate like for 15 minutes in the game on a really convenient time and day for your alliance. And now let's take a look at the event itself and its rules. So Territory Defense is an event where you participate as an alliance together to defend flags against monsters. When you unlock the event, monsters are attacking your alliance flags and then you need to defend them. And you need to finish off the monsters as fast as you can. And it happens every two weeks. So now we look at the different kind of monsters and this is the main topic of this video itself. How do, how do I decide what kind of presets or what kind of army formations to send to a particular monster to maximize the damage output that I get. So the number of points, the amount of points that I'm getting. How do I decide, okay, this is the best thing to do. So let's look at the different monsters and what are their abilities. So the Minotaur, its ability is that it has resistance against cavalry, so anything, any attack that a cavalry does is reduced in damage against Minotaur, um, the normal Minotaur. And then there is Rock Giant, it resists infantry, so low infantry has less damage against them. Then the Skeleton, that does debuff against archers. And then finally the Fire Demons, which are resistant against mages. So based on each monster's ability or strength we try to send the army that will do the maximum damage so for example here the minotaur rock giant they are actually strong against our friend line but our friend line is not in, not intended to do damage anyways so any kind of army formation will work here so if you're a mage player mage focused backline is perfect to send to these kind these monsters or if you're an archer player then your backline should consist of that and then if you come to skeletons, they have archer resistance. So that means mages are perfect against them. And also angels are working as well. And then when you come to fire demons, they resist against mages. So sending archers against them. So if you're a mage player, you can already combine the minotaur, rock giant and skeleton together into one preset. So you can send your mages, you're maximizing your mages based on how many troops you have. You can split them which I will show you later on how to make formations and how to defend as many flags as you can based on the number of troops you have. And then Fire Demon, okay, it resists against mages. So as a mage player, you might want to have some extra archers just for doing this event, which I do. And 
it's quite useful for me to do damage against them. And then since the Campbell introduced a new update, they reduced the, the number of waves. They also introduced um, different kinds of monsters, as in after wave seven or from wave seven, they increase in strength and it becomes a little bit more difficult to kill them. So the monster leaders, they have just along with the normal abilities like cavalry resistance or infantry resistance, they have extra abilities, which basically means for each of these monsters, if, for example, the Minotaur or the Minotaur leader here, it has cavalry resistance along with a specific skill called Warcry. It basically means this monster will do more damage to your cavalry extra. If it is a steel giant, then its speciality is against infantry, so it does that way. So all of these will have these particular skills against their own assigned unit, let's say. And then also the last wave, the wave 12, would only have one monster and it is the demon warlock. And this is the most difficult one to kill. And sometimes you need to send multiple times to it to be able to kill it. And uh, another problem with this monster is that it gives away lower amount of points compared to the other monsters. So when you hit this monster, even if it is difficult to kill it and it is the strongest, your point output is low. So based on that, sometimes you need to adjust your strategy if you want to kill it, if you want to try to hit it early enough, or if, you, if your flags have enough health before you need to actually start hitting it. So really depends on how strong your alliance is. It doesn't have any kind of speciality against a particular unit. It is acting against the whole army. And now let's go and take a look at the presets that I use. And based on the number of troops you have, it's always helpful for uh, splitting them in an even way so that you can send more than one march and also use them to defend multiple flags. This will help the Alliance to defend as many as they can and bring down monsters faster. So here I have more than a million troops, so I can always send, based on the number of troops I have, four armies at a time. It means I can defend four flags at, at once. Let's have a look at it now. So here, since I, like I said, so the, as a, mon as a mage player, for me, Minotaur, Skeleton, and the Rock Giant, they all have no specific debuff against mages. So I use a mage formation against these three monsters altogether. It also makes it less confusing for me to, to pick different armies. So three for three monsters, it's the same preset. And then the, the, the fire demon, I use a separate preset with archers and uh, angels, which you will see. And in case if you're an archer player, the, mon the three monsters for the same preset will be Minotaur, Rock Giant and Fire Demon. So basically for that, you have archers as your backline. And if it is the same way that I'm doing, then for the skeleton, in case of archer players, you will be using mages and angels together to do the preset. So just interchange these when you are an archer player, since I'm showing here for uh, the presets for a mage player, since I'm focused on mages. So here, uh, basically what I did was divide my mages by three, the number. So here, 37,000 out of the 112K of my title mages, for example, and then one each of every other troop type, including the T11 infantry. I'm using T10 uh, infantry here to as in, in more numbers uh, as the front line. And the rest is like one of everything, including the cavalry and archers like you see here. And my mages are being split into three so that they can be used in three formations. So I don't have to choose them each time. I just send them. I know that uh, they fill up each easily like that they are there is enough to have three formations sent and i also pick one angel just uh, to have that extra hit from the monster taken away and then i just filled in like forty-two thousand titan infantry you can also have a varied number of front line but i wouldn't recommend using too many of them and that's my preset for the first three monsters which are minotaur rock giant and the skeleton and then when you come to the next monster, which is Fire Demon, so that's the fourth type of monster. So this is the same for all the other special monsters as well, the Minotaur Leader or Skeleton Leader, like Born King, all of them, I use the same preset there. And now when you come to the Fire Demon, I use my T-Soul Infantry there so that they survive longer. And also here I'm having this mixed number of troops as in T12s or T10s because I'm still promoting troops. So once I have a full T12 armies everywhere, I would be only sending T12s. Okay, now 
The difference from our previous preset to this one is that I'm using arches here. So just removing the the one the three three arches that I used up for just filling up the the formation in the um, the other three monster presets here. So the, the I filled up the remaining arches and also same way the angels here. All my angels are also fighting against the fire demon and I used one each of all the the T eleven and T twelve or T ten mage that I have to fill on that side as well. Another idea that you can have is how to defend in territory defense. Like sometimes you send too early and you might have noticed that you will bounce off because the, the flags won't be able to hold all the armies that are going there. So you need to time it in a way that you reach one or two seconds after the monster has arrived and there is the sword symbol that you can see when the fight has already started. So what I do is uh, before the monster already are closer where you have to send yeah, I click on the, the coordinates and see, okay, um, how much time do, does it take me to get to that flag? So let's say 13 seconds. Uh, in that case, I wait until there is 15 seconds or so for the monster to arrive. And then I start clicking to send that reinforcement. So by the time I choose everything, that two seconds would have passed. And I would always be arriving exactly one second after or two seconds after the monster has arrived there. And I'm never bouncing back. So this is something that you can keep in mind. So check out uh, how much time does it take you for reaching a particular flag. And based on that, you can send it. And this way, you will never bounce. So that's it for today. Hope you all enjoyed the video and learned something new. And maybe you would have more army formations to send to uh, defend, against, defend the flags against monsters now in territory defense. Good luck with getting more points. And let me know in the comments below what you think and what kind of formations you use. And if there have been any different kind of results for you in this manner so yeah see you in another video goodbye guys